Good morning and happy Sabbath and welcome. I wanted to share with you as a call to worship um, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. May this worship time be a time of joy and peace for all of us as we continue on in our service. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We're about to do a song to give praise unto the Lord. We'll do hymn number 337, Redeemed How I Love to Proclaim It. Redeemed by the Blood of the Lamb, number 337. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed through His infinite mercy His child and forever I am Redeemed, redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed, redeemed for tuning in. We're glad you could be here today. And I just want to share with you some announcements that we have here. Um, you will notice that the background's a little different from the Pine House Drive Church. We are currently in the middle of, of preparing for the VBS um, that is going on this next week. You will see the promo video in just a few moments. Um, and so we're taking an opportunity to use a studio right now. Um, and it also I also want to bring your attention to the fact that while we have the VBS going on um, this next week, again, you'll see the promo, next Sabbath will be a special VBS Sabbath. So you want to make sure that you tune in to that. It'll be a wonderful time there. We have another announcement that we have a video prepared for you, and so I won't go into much detail, but we have uh, a camp meeting this year. Even though we won't be able to physically go to the camp as we've, uh, has been our habit throughout the years, 
and uh, many of us are, have, are missing that opportunity, yet we will have a weekend, August 7 and 8, where we can gather online. And so there is a lot going on in preparations for that. So I'll leave it to the, to the uh, video here in a few minutes, the promo, to give more details to that. Um, we just want a reminder that uh, we've had vacations this, this summer. I was on vacation for a few weeks. Pastor Lucian will actually be back tomorrow, as I understand. And uh, Pastor Asha will be taking some vacation time this summer as well. Um, and finally, I just wanted to bring to your attention that if you weren't aware, our NAD president, Dan, Pastor Dan Jackson, recently retired. And the, um, the committee met, and then the, uh, just Thursday morning, the General Conference uh, ratified the, the vote that uh, our new NAD president is Alexander Bryant. So um, we can just praise God, and we want to pray for him, that God would bless his leadership. And that is the, the announcements we have at this time, and we will continue on in our service. Welcome to Camp White Sand. We want to invite you to join us for a camp meeting 2020. Our theme this year is Stormproofing Your Faith. Today we're working on construction for the new fourplex here at Camp White Sand, stormproofing it in a sense. We're making sure that it's well built inside and out to withstand the wind and the rain as well as the stronger storms that batter the camp each year. It'll be ready for our church family reunion when we can again be together face to face. In life, we also face storms that batter our faith. COVID-19 has kept us inside for months and apart even during the summer. Many people feel isolated, lonely, even depressed. Add to that the oppression of racism and the uncertainty of the economic upheaval. People are hurting. We need each other. We need the support of our church family. We need a faith that can weather the storms of life. Jesus rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was calm. And he said unto them, where is your faith? We need to stormproof our faith for times like these, when everything around us is tossed and turned and seems like it's out of control. Scripture tells us that things are going to get worse from here, that just before he comes, Things will wrap up quickly, that there will be seven last plagues, and that He is coming to take us home. COVID-19 means that we have to wait before we can gather on this beautiful campground. But it also provides us a wonderful opportunity. God has blessed us with the technology and the people to allow us to gather virtually in the comfort and safety of our own homes. Through a combination of streaming, pre-recorded messages, and chat rooms, we can come together to stormproof our faith. This means that every person has a front row seat. The volume is adjustable, and you can easily share this uplifting event with family and friends from around the world. Camp meeting becomes accessible to everyone in your home. It also means that we can have participation from our church family all the way from Nunavut to Maple Creek to Pemina Valley. We have a vast territory and coming together to share a common experience makes us stronger. During these uncertain times, we can have peace and storm-proof our faith for the trials yet to come. Join us on YouTube, Facebook, and Zoom starting on Friday evening, August 7. On Sabbath, We'll stormproof our faith, beginning with an early morning prayer session, then interactive Sabbath school classes for all divisions, plan to be enriched by dynamic presentations and spiritual interaction. Your faith will be strengthened as you enjoy the talents of people all over our field and interact with our global family from the comfort and safety of your own home. Meeting times and details can be accessed on our website at mansasadventist.ca. We look forward to seeing you at Camp Meet in 2020, stormproofing your faith.
Hey, boys and girls. Do you know what time it is? Oh, it's almost VBS time. And you know, VBS is running from July 13th to July 17th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. You know, I know that's early for you because it's summertime, but VBS is something special. I know this year we're going to be learning some really great lessons. We're going to be learning that Jesus' power helps us be bold. Also, that Jesus' power pulls us through. Oh, man, boys and girls, I'm excited to meet you. I almost forgot. My name is Mary Lou, and I work over at the Choo Choo Snack. And I can't wait to meet you. It'll be Monday to Friday. So make sure that you tell your mommy and daddy to go and register you. Down on the bottom of the screen is the registration website. So make sure you, you have it done. And I can't wait to see you in the next couple weeks. It's going to be something special. All right, boys and girls, you have yourself a wonderful Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Please turn your hymnals with me to hymn number 516, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. Church. Our scripture reading is taken from Luke 8, verses 24 and 25, and it reads, And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was, there was a calm. But he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. May God bless the reading of his word. Okay. We have the privilege at this time to come before the king of the universe. As we come to him in prayer, I want to invite you to, to kneel, if you can, as we pray to him. So let's, let's kneel and let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you, Father God, that in such tumultuous times that we are living in right now, 
you promised 2,000 years ago. My peace I give to you. And he, you said, Lord Jesus, that in this world we wouldn't have trouble, but that we could be of good courage, for you have overcome the world. Father, we come before you, seeking you to give us that peace today. I pray, Father God, that you would give us internal peace, that you would forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of our, of our sins and of our wrongs, and bless us with a clean conscience. I pray, precious Father, that you would bless us with external peace, that you would be present to prevail over the, the, the difficulties and the challenges that we are facing in this world today. As we've all been dealing with COVID-19 for the last few months, I pray for your healing hand to be upon the world and that you would bless, that people would be healed, you would, your hand would be present to push back this pandemic. Father, we pray for your peace um, within the church and within the world over the racial tensions. Father, not just peace. I pray that you would bless with resolution, that you would help us as a human race to recognize that we all come from your hand. We are all of the same blood and that we all matter. I pray that you would bless us, Father God, to, to do what we can, what we should, to stand up for those who have been wronged, those who are being oppressed, and that we would be a voice of justice. Bless your people with, with wisdom, with power of your spirit, and with the love of God. I pray for your blessings upon your people that we could be united in love, in, in, in kindness, in love, in gentleness, in patience, and in unity, that we would show to the world the love that you have for us. And Father, we, as we just lift up to, the, to you these things, we also ask for your Holy Spirit, that we would not lose sight of the work you've called us to through this and through other channels to share your love to the world and the fact that you are coming soon. Jesus, bless us to be able to share with others the hope that there is in your soon return. And we thank you for your loving kindness. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. We don't know all their names. Women invested in Jesus' cause from the beginning. When Jesus traveled, the twelve went with him, along with Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. Lydia, a businesswoman, became the first follower of Jesus in Europe. Priscilla and her husband, Aquila, hosted Paul in Corinth, Ephesus, and Rome. Women's investment goes beyond financial. Jesus met a Samaritan woman who became the first evangelist in John's Gospel. Mary Magdalene was the first witness of Jesus' resurrection. Tabitha, or Dorcas, shared the Gospel through acts of service. Phoebe, a deacon, traveled hundreds of miles to deliver Paul's letter to Rome. Junia, an apostle, went to prison for Jesus' cause. Our mothers, sisters, and daughters still face unique challenges as we serve Christ Jesus together. Women's ministries provide opportunities and resources for women to experience spiritual growth, freedom from abuse, mentoring, networking, and greater service at home, church, and in the community. You may not know all their names, but your investment today will impact the lives of women and men across the division by Jesus' cause. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless the women in our church and those involved in the women ministries. Give them your blessing and help us to have a nice Saturday as we go about our day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning, boys and girls, and happy Sabbath. So today's story is going to be about temptation. Have you guys ever been tempted? So temptation is basically anything that can take you away from God or just stop you from doing things that you know are right and do the wrong thing. You can be tempted by your friends, your family, and just anybody that you really hold close to you or people that you don't even know at all. So when I first started high school, I made a lot of new friends, different people of different ethnicities and backgrounds. 
And most of us had the same morals. We had a lot of things in common, like working hard. But this particular group of friends that I had made didn't really care about any of that. They didn't care if they got good grades. They would skip classes. They would fool around. They wouldn't study. They wouldn't do their homework. And I was, they knew that I didn't really do any of that. And they were okay with that. They were still good friends. We would talk. We would hang out. But every once in a while, they would say, Hey, Ruby, we're going to skip class. You should come. And sometimes it was tempting, but I knew what I was supposed to do and I knew it wasn't that, so I'd say no. And they would continue tempting me to go, they would continue asking me, inviting me, saying that it would be fun, we'd get food, but I would always say, oh no, no thanks, I'm okay. And their always excuse whenever they went anywhere, they would say, oh no, it's fine, we still have time, we'll get our grades up, don't worry. So pretty soon, Finals came along and basically finals is just a long set of tests that are really important for your grades and They would still be fooling around. They'd still be skipping their classes. They wouldn't take their study notes their sheets or anything and Pretty soon it was two weeks from finals and these guys were still fooling around and I would say shouldn't you guys study and I was like No, we have time. Don't worry. The tests are gonna be easy. The teachers aren't hard so pretty soon, two weeks turned into one, and then finals were in three days. Then all of a sudden, all my friends started coming to class, they started asking for the notes, and they were really stressed out about it. And they said, where did the time go? We had so much time to do this, I don't know what happened. This just creeped up on us completely. But they knew that if they really had put their effort in, they could have done a lot better. So the moral of the story is that when you're tempted to do things that you know you shouldn't do, you should always just do what you feel is right, even if it's hard. And that will just always lead you through the right things in life. Bye.
This morning, I'd like to share with you some songs that were written during the times that people were going through some challenging moments in their own lives. I would also like to look at a few examples of some challenging situations in the Bible of some of the lives of these men and women. As we are all going through some difficult and strange times this year, we all wonder when is it going to end and what will the new normal feel or look like? We need to take comfort in Christ. So during these times, we have to remember that there are songs that we can use to help us. For example, the song, in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. And that's from our hymnal number 593. And it also continues to say in the chorus, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. And we have to remember this rock is Jesus. Now what I'll try to do is look at some of the situations now using some songs and some of the lives of these men and women and what they were going through at the times when they wrote these songs. And we have to remember that it is not always easy. Now the first song is Be Still My Soul. And that is a song that is number 461 in our hymnal. Now, as we look at this song, it was written about roughly 100 years after the time of Martin Luther. This is between 18, 1483 to 1546. Europe was in bad shape. The continent was racked by the 30-year war, which pitted Catholics against Protestants. The Lutheran Church had lapsed into formalism and dead orthodoxy. People had stopped going to church. Then God raised up what is known as the Pithis Movement, a movement that was characterized by music, personal holiness, and missionary zeal. And in the midst of this time of turmoil and discouragement, Katharina von Schigel noticed the verse in Psalms 46 that says, be still and know that I am God. That's Psalms 46 verse 10. As God spoke to her, she wrote this great hymn. Whatever your circumstances, whatever your problems, you can find comfort in these great words. Now this same song was not written in a form where it had the music to it. And the, the man by the name of John Sibelius, he put the music to it. And this song is one of the national type songs in Finland, referred to as Finlandia. Are we going through the turmoil in the world? We need to focus our attention on Jesus. And I would just like to share with you in Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. And I will just read this here with you. Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. Now it happened to be on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of this lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came up and late on the lake. And they were filled, and the boat was filling with water. And they were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? 
for he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Now, as we look at the previous song, Be still, my soul. The Lord is on my side. When the storms of life come, we have to remember who is in our boat. And like the disciples, we too try very hard to do things our way, ourselves. And even though Jesus was in the boat, he was resting peacefully, but they were in turmoil. And sometimes rather than going to Jesus the first time around, we tend to use him as our last resort. He said to them, come on to, he said to, to come on to him, if you are weary and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. Now another song that I also chose was looking at the situation of someone who had lost his loved ones and also his business. And we want to look at what happened. And that song is referred to as, It Is Well With My Soul. We need to know a little bit about what happened back then. Now this was back in the 1800s. And October 8th to 10th, in 1871, we had the Great Chicago Fire. Now, it is mentioned um, as you read, this fire covered an area approximately 8.55 kilometers squared. It destroyed over 17,500 buildings, and approximately 300 people died. Now, I'll just share a little bit more about the man who wrote this song. His name was Horatio Spafford. Now, talking about tragedy in life, the year had been filled with tragedy for Horatio. He was only 43 years old, and he was a businessman, as was mentioned, and he penned this hymn. He and his wife were still grieving over the loss of their son, and he also had that great fire in Chicago. He realized that his family needed to get away. So he decided to send his wife and daughters on a trip over to Europe, to England. His wife and daughters went ahead of him because he had some business to take care of. And they sailed on the SS Ville de Havre. And he planned to be following in a few days. But on the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was struck by another ship and it sank within 12 minutes. More than 200 lives were lost, including Spafford's four daughters. Now, when the survivors were brought to shore in Cardiff, Wales, Mrs. Spafford cabled her husband with the words, saved alone. He then booked passage on the next ship sailing to England. It was while he was crossing the Atlantic, and that was in 1876, that he penned the words to this hymn. Later on, Philip Bliss was the one who wrote the music for this song. And this is a very popular song, hymn number 530 in our hymnal, It Is Well With My Soul. When you think of what he has gone through, he and his wife, we too can think back of the life of Job, the challenges he also faced. He lost all his kids. And we too sometimes will lose everything. But we have to remember, in spite of what's going on around us in this world, that God is there for us. There's a Psalm, in ver Psalm 31, verse 14, that states, but I trusted in the Lord, and I said, Thou art my God. And also in Psalms 46, 1, it states here, God is our refuge and strength, 
a very present help in trouble. Now as we continue on looking at some of these men and women in the Bible, as you notice in our opening song, the title was All the Way My Savior Leads Me, and that's hymn number 516. And I'll just like to share some information, the background, on the lady who penned this song. I think now of the situation here, lost vision. Fanny Crosby, a blind hymn writer who lived a century ago, trusted the Lord to lead her and to provide for her each step of the way. One day she needed $5 and didn't know where she would get it. So she prayed about it. A few minutes later, a stranger knocked on her door. When she answered it, the man gave her a $5 bill and then turned around and left. Crosby was amazed at the Lord's marvelous timing. Later she wrote, I have no way of accounting for this except to believe that God is here to answer my prayer. He put in the heart of this kind gentleman to bring me the money to help me. My, thought, my first thought was, it is so wonderful the way lead, the Lord leads me. That day she wrote this hymn, all the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Now, Fanny Crosby was a prolific writer, and she wrote more than 8,000 songs or hymns. And many of these songs you will find in several hymnals wherever you go. Now, one of the problems she had was sometimes when they were publishing a hymnal or a book, she would have so many songs, and they will say, well, we cannot put all these songs in. We have to leave room for others. So what she decided to do, rather than using her name, her real name, she would use another name so as to get some of these songs published. I would just like to share some of the words from that song, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. And it reads like this. I'll just read the first two stanzas. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my, fairies, fair, my, my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Now I'd like to read on, going back into the book of Luke, chapter 8. And I'd just like to share with you the situation of this woman. And it's in Luke chapter 8. Verses 43, Luke 8, 43 to 48. And it reads, Now a woman, having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitude throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. 
Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before Jesus. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. In some verses, it talks about your faith have made you whole. And he also told her, go in peace. Now, when you stop and think of this lady, think of the burden that she was carrying for all those years, struggling. There might be some out there who are going through moments like this right now with health issues. Could be financial, could be spiritual. And your heart is very heavy. And we have to think that God is there for us in spite of what's going on in our lives. Now this last song here that I would like to share with you is the closing song. It's number 529, Under His Wings. And in the title here in the other reading, it talks about under his wings, I am safely abiding. Now this man, William O'Cushion, he suddenly lost his voice. He was distraught. He didn't know what to do. He had been a pastor for several churches in New York and enjoyed fruitful ministry. Then a paralysis affected his voice, so he could no longer preach. He wondered how he could continue to serve the Lord if he couldn't preach. He cried out to God, O oh Lord, give me something to do for you. Not yet 50 years old, Cushion wondered how God could possibly use him. But God did. In the following years, he wrote texts for more than 300 hymns and gospel songs and teamed it with some of the best known gospel composers of the day. They supplied the music and he wrote the words. The evangelist team of Moody and Sankey spread cushion songs around the world. When he was 73, this prolific hymn writer was moved by the words of Psalms 17, verse 8. Hide me in the shadow of your wings and thought about God's care for him, even when everything seemed dark. This song was the result. Although he could not speak with an audible voice, God multiplied his words for generations to come. And I'd just like to share the song here with you. Under his wings, I am safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me, and I am his child. The chorus, under his wings, under his wings. Who from his love can sever? Under his wings, my soul shall abide. Safely abide forever. The second, under his wings, what a refuge in sorrow. How the heart yearningly turns to his rest. Often when earth has no balm for my healing, there I find comfort and there I am blessed. The last verse, under his wings, oh what precious enjoyment. There will I hide till life's trials are o'er. Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. I'd like to share with you another reading from Psalms chapter 91. Psalms chapter 91, verses one to four.
Psalms 91, 1 to 4. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous temp pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. We have to remember that when the storms of life come, when we forget who is in our boat, just look and God is there. God is always there for us and we all have to do, all we have to do is call on him like the disciples did. And sometimes we tend to have it as a second resort rather than the first resort. And as we think about the times we are going through right now, many of us, as I said before, are experiencing some challenging times. And we have to remember that God is there for us. And one of the things you can do as we go through these moments in life is to think of some songs and also think of some psalms that we can go to. And when you look at the life of David, he had also a very tumultuous life, very challenging. And he wrote many psalms. And these were used to help him through those difficult times. And you too can also find comfort in the psalms but you can also find comfort in the songs. And God is invested in many people out there who are writers. He's given them the inspiration to share songs with you that can help you through. So when you have those bad days, think of a song and just sing along with it or hum it if you don't know the words. And it's amazing how it can bring a certain peace within. So I pray that as you continue on, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But let us keep trusting in God, because we know He is the one who is going to bring us through this. So we'll just close with prayer. Father in heaven, I want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you've given me to share your words and the songs that have been written. And I ask in a special way that you will guide us in these times. Help us not to doubt you. Help us to remember that you are there for us. You're always in our boat. Help us to call on you in times of need. And even when we are not in need, but also keeping that close communion with you on a daily basis. Thank you for all your many blessings to us. And I pray, Lord, that you will continue to be with our members, be with our churches, be with our leaders, especially in these times. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 529. Under his wings, I'm safely abiding. Number 529. Oh. Uh -huh.
is love.